Chris, what is our third main topic today? Fourth. This is from... No, it's fourth. Third. Third. Is this third? Yeah. On the screen. I was just so worked up about the last one, it felt like more. <laughs> um, this is from On the Screen. Hi, John and crew. What do you think about the news that Peacock is losing money at a stupidly fast rate? <laughs> almost as stupid as its name. The rap says the... <laughs> lost... I... <laughs> I sent this. I sent you a text yesterday <laughs> about, this. about this. Yesterday, <laughs> the rap says that they lost 1.7 billion in 2021, which is more than double what they lost the year before. At this rate, will Peacock be the first casualty of the streaming wars? Is there any way for it to survive? Okay, I just got to say, I just finally took a look at the graphic. <laughs> <right now>. <laughs> <laughs> Peacock Max TV Plus Unlimited. <laughs> Come up with this shit. <laughs> I just had to throw it back there. I, I caught Max I Plus Unlimited. I didn't want you to see it until later on in the topic. Well, you know man. what the problem is? I wouldn't have, except that as Chris was reading off the topics, you're doing this. No. <laughs> Trying to look at the monitor behind me. I'm like, what is Ray looking at? He yeah, caught I'm Max. Play school next. I just wanted to see if you caught it. Because sometimes you, you... Sometimes you, I don't. It just you goes right up my head. No, or you substitute the image when it's something that you... Oh, don't that's true. But think yeah. work better. Peacock Max TV Plus Unlimited. Love it. Anyway, listen. Of course, we all know the story here. The stupidest name in the history of streaming services. Hell, Crackle. Is a better name for Crackle a streaming. is a better name. Crackle is Crunchy better Roll. Name. A great name. Crunchy Roll, Crunchy roll, roll, roll is so great. great. Crunchy Roll is a better name. That is a better yeah. name. It has nothing to do with food, though. That's, that's, that's nothing. No, that's, that's nothing. disappointing. We're watching Food Wars. It's not a Guy Fieri uh, channel, but no, Crunchy Roll, nothing. Much better name than that is. Uh, the Peacock, dumbest name in the world. And, and before anybody writes in, I, I know, uh, the show, don't you know that NBC's logo has always been a Peacock? I know, that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So at any rate, dumb name, but I got to tell you, this is a service that has grown on me. Like I, I find myself actually watching it a whole, but not just because of Parks and Rec and not just because of The Office, but like I just started watching Wolf Like Me and that's a peacock. And I'm like, you know what? If this is what their original programming stuff is going to be, okay. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate about the title, but that's the name of it now. They're not going to change it at this point. So I might as well stop crying about it, but it's actually a pretty good thing. But here's a problem. Like all streaming services, especially once they get rolling, they're losing money. And they're losing a uh the economic uh the economic shit ton. That's it. <laughs> shit ton. A shit ton of money is the money that they are losing. You know, that economic term. The economic term that they teach you in Harvard. The shit ton of money. You sold that so well that I was like, I don't know economics term. John, why are you sleeping <laughs> at me? So, yeah, they are losing a lot of money on this. All right. This comes with the folks over at Variety write the following. NBCU parent Comcast outlined plans to boost spending on Peacock content even more in 2022 and beyond. Comcast is reporting a fourth quarter earnings Thursday revealed that Peacock generated $778 million in revenue. That's not profit. $778 million in revenue for the full year 2021 with an adjusted loss of $1.7 billion. That's compared with $118 million of revenue and an adjusted EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, loss of $663 million in 2020. They went from $663 million in losses to $1.7 billion in losses. For uh, 2022, Comcast expects Peacock losses to total about $2.5 billion as it invests in content doubles. They're going to double down. On the investment content, CFO Mike uh, uh, Kavanaugh said on the earnings, earnings call. Okay, so look, I get it. You see these numbers. You took in $778 million and you still ended up losing $1.7 billion? That's terrible. It, it is, but I'm going to tell you right now, the folks over at Peacock are not spooked by this. I'm going to tell you right now, they probably expected this. Of course they did. When, the, when you're getting this this type of a thing up and running, it takes boatloads of money. Like, people are shy. Like, I remember I had this conversation with somebody the other day. It's like, well, it doesn't really cost Disney anything to run Disney+. Plus. I mean, they own all the content. The content licensing is one part of the money that goes into this. I'm not going to say who, but I was talking to somebody who was working on the insides 
of Disney, and they had a little bit of a look. I mean, and some, a lot of this is public knowledge too, because it's a publicly traded company. But the amount of administrative costs, administrative costs. Forget the technology. Forget all that. Forget all the offices around the world. The administrative cost is in the double-digit billions to run Disney Plus. Double-digit billions, right? So the folks at Peacock knew we're not going to come out of the gate and be in the and be in the black. We know that. We've got to get this out and running. We got to get brand awareness out there, and then we got to start pumping money like it's going out of style into our original content because they know. Rob, you and I have been saying it for like a couple of years now. Original content, unique IP is king. It's what's going to be the king going forward long term. And they they had to get themselves established. They have a good, healthy library of stuff. And now they got to move forward. Is this a stunning number to hear? Yeah, it is. Like $1.7 billion in losses. Of course it is. But I think if you take a step back and take a better look at it, you realize, yeah, they're okay with that. And they know next year is probably going to be $2.5 billion in losses. And they're doubling down on their content investment again. They don't look at this as, what money I put in right today can I take out tomorrow? They're, what money we put in over the next two or three years that hopefully we start seeing back in 8, 9, 10, or 11 years. That's how these guys look at it. And I don't think they're spooked by this. I don't think they're shocked by it, even though to us the number looks shocking. Rob, you you sent me the text. I first heard about this because I'm sitting there eating my lunch yesterday and bing, bing, like my phone's going on. What's going on? And Rob is saying, like, holy crap, look at that. <laughs> anyway, you had a look at this. What do your take on it? Well, look, you know, we talked on this show about how basically the streamers are spending 100 to 150% of their subscription dollars on original programming to fight, quote unquote, the streaming wars, which, by the way, that will not last eventually they're going to have to stop that kind of a spend. I mean, look what happened to Quibi, our favorite yep. thing. I mean, you can't you can't compete in this marketplace like you said a shit ton. You have to send a shit spend a shit ton of money because you have to justify why are people subscribing to your platform? I mean, the thing about Netflix is <laughs> there's stuff dumping every day that you don't even know about. So at least there's, <laughs> yeah. and they're acquiring stuff from all around the world. If you look at their if you really wanted to look you could find new stuff to watch on Netflix just about every day. It might not be stuff you're interested in, but Netflix, and look at what happened to their stock price over the last two weeks. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've been yeah. getting hammered, and yes, you think have. that how did Netflix, how would they get hammered? This is a very volatile, crazy time, and the problem is, you know, the industry is trying to figure out, well, let's go all in over here, all in over there. The studio is like, we're going to have day and date releases on streaming that we're going to have on and the movie theaters, and, and you watch Spider-Man No Way Home, that blows up that common conventional wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 we're, in a, we're in a very crazy, volatile sea change. These are rough seas. This is not a sea change that's going from one place to another. It's, it's, there's undercurrents and riptides and all kinds of things happening, and nobody knows. This right now is going to be, if this happens for two or three more years, they said we made how much did they make six hundred and something yeah billion. So it decreased. If they didn't make that, think about what the loss could have been over two billion dollars. Yeah, you know if they hadn't. So we'll see. Is there going to be growth over the next couple of years? So eventually that loss diminishes because, like you said, they knew they were going to have these kinds of losses, yeah. but for how many years? You, John, you know what? Uh, he, I'm sorry, it, but you know what annoys me about the streaming stuff is yesterday I tried to sh sign up for showtime right? right and they have show anytime show go showtime go and something else and i just said no nope, i'm not going to try to figure out same what thing that with hbo and paramount you're saying you're, you're going through a dilemma with paramount right yeah, trying to watch paramount the network something. there's paramount, paramount plus. plus there's i mean of course and that was a, a big thing back to hbo but hbo launched hbo max while they still had hbo hbo now hbo go and a lot of people were at, like at Paramount movies. They announced what yesterday, yep. therefore they're going to change that. Around. Like what's amazing to me is it shows a real lack of, of, of leadership or understanding yep, exactly. when they launch these things and everything is so half-assed. Like I think the entire entertainment business, especially in this area, how many Blu-rays and I know people don't like physical media, but how many mistakes are being made even in the release of movies on physical media they have to recall things because they've gotten rid of so much institutional knowledge because they don't want to pay anybody who's veterans of the industries so they've got all these people making decisions that are not veterans they don't understand half of this product and i think consumers are suffering because we're all like well what 
what should we do? I'll what should we subscribe to? And and there's a there's a we don't talk about Bruno thing going on with Netflix that nobody's talking about. And that's this. But inside Netflix, they know this. There is a ticking clock going on in Netflix. Because right now, with all the big... We always talk about, look how big Lucifer did on there. And look how big Umbrella Academy did. By the way, I cannot wait for Umbrella Academy to come back. But well, Lucifer... The, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but, but the, the not talked about reality at Netflix is all of their top performing shows are not their shows. Yep. All their top shows are catalog shows that are licensed to them from other networks and the licenses are starting to expire and everybody else is launching their own streaming networks now and all those catalogs of shows that is Netflix's top performers are all going to be leaving them soon and so while they're doing pretty good they're doing better right now than they've ever done uh, stock prices notwithstanding but they know they are in a they're in a moon race they're in a race to the moon with all the other things because they're going to lose all their top performing content in the next couple of years. And so they got to get that original stuff going. Anyway, Chris, you hear about this, the, the money loss. I, I had a curiosity too, from a personal level. Mm -hmm. Are you and Logan watching anything on Peacock right now? Is this just something that's even a part of your daily literally life? Literally just wrestling. Royal Rumble. Yay. Oh, that's we're what gonna yeah, watch. We're going to watch the Royal Rumble on that. WWE. Um, I totally forgot about that. And then, I mean, Office reruns, right? Because yeah. we need that chicken soup for the soul that is The Office. But other than that, I mean, I haven't checked out any of their original content. I literally just use it so I can watch Becky Lynch throw down. <laughs> that I mean, listen, and we all thought it was going to be a great thing when they started, when they got the WWE Network. A lot of people thought, oh, this is going to be great. And then Ray was, it, it was the WWE Network, right? Like they were having all those broadcast problems. Oh, yeah. You remember the, that? They the were very like, first pay-per-view, everyone wanted the spanish audio and that's what everyone got <laughs> you know and the video was like choppy yeah. and john here's a question too that i would ask so we know that the last year of friends was on netflix and they paid a hundred million dollars for one yeah, year of licensing <laughs> so a hundred million dollars so that is the value of friends today does that mean that hbo max even though it's partly a warner brothers show but they still have to pay for it they don't get it for free so is the licensing of Friends, even on an HBO Max, $100 million a year? Probably not. It's a great question because here's what a lot of people forget. You got to understand, and, and Rob, you understand this, but like when a lot of these actors in these shows, it doesn't matter that Friends went off the air however many years ago. They own some. They still get residuals and they still get a piece of the pie. And so you have a fiduciary responsibility that you have to try to maximize your profits of the show. Therefore, once HBO or whoever it is takes that, that show back, they have to have one hand paying the other within their corporate structure. They got to pay for it. Even though it's it's coming out of one pocket and going to the other, you still have to do that because you have a fiduciary responsibility to people involved and they got to get paid. Because well, there have been lawsuits, Rob, when like, people say, oh like no. Like the, the X-Files. Exactly, you know, Chris Carter, yes. like they were dealing, Fox was dealing to itself. Yep. and not getting the kind of money they could get with an outside license. And, I mean, I'm curious about all this. I mean, I don't – and, again, I think a lot of people are curious about this because they want to understand the television, the network television business is completely disrupted because way, the way people got paid yep. through residuals and foreign licensing deals are all going away because streamers own the worldwide, worldwide rights to things. I mean, yeah. smarter people than I could explain it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, just a neophyte when it comes to these things, but there's something to be considered. The question is for you guys. What do you think when you, especially when you hear that number coming right out of the gate, 1.7 billion in losses, less than a billion dollars in revenue. Do you think that's astronomical or do you look at it and say, no, this is probably what they planned. Do you guys watch Peacock? Listen, I'm not going to lie. I hate the name of it, but I've actually kind of been enjoying the service. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.